St. Lawrence of Brindisi. This is the story of St. Lawrence of Brindisi, scholar, statesman, and saint, yet all his life a humble servant of God. My name is John. I grew up with Lawrence at Brindisi, and in 1575 we entered the Capuchin Order at Verona. But our superiors, who chose to make a teacher of me, saw that Lawrence had other gifts as well. He could persuade the most hostile audience, not by oratory, but by gentle logic. And so he was sent out to walk the roads of Italy as a missionary. After ten years, his health broke down. and He was stationed in Rome. I was greatly surprised to see him back in Verona one day in 1598. Welcome home, Friar Lawrence. It's good to see you. I may not be so welcome, Friar John, when you've heard what I have to say. Bad news? Not exactly. It's just that I have a request to make. You can refuse, of course, but I hope you won't. Anything that I can do, you know that, Friar Lawrence. I want you to come to Germany with me. To Germany? Yes. But what about Rome? We've been so proud of all you've accomplished there. God was very good to me in Rome. His grace worked such wonderful conversions. And I learned so much... There are such learned scholars among the rabbis in Rome, Friar John. It was an education just to talk with them. And who but you could have talked with them in Hebrew. Some of us can read it, but to speak it. I even blessed my poor health for giving me the opportunity. I had great plans for a new commentary on the scriptures. Never mind. Let them wait. His Holiness has asked our order to send a band of friars into Germany to fight the heresy there. Will you come? I'm not a missionary, you know that. You speak German and you're a fine teacher. The heretics have great orators, emotional speakers. What we must do is combat their arguments with logic and truth. We must make people realize that the Turks are the real enemy. Why, the Sultan could never have invaded Hungary if the people had realized that with his coming they would lose their Christian faith as well as their freedom. And the more our people are divided by heresies, the more the Turks will conquer that is what His Holiness fears. Politics divide them enough as it is. They must be made to see that they must fight now for Christian civilization, not just for an archduke or an emperor. Not an easy task, Friar Lawrence. Uh, I wish I were stronger. Rheumatism is such a minor complaint. Nothing tragic about it. But a Jewish physician in Rome told me that I would suffer from it all my life. And it is a nuisance. Well, Friar John, will you come? Of course, and God be thanked for the honor. We soon found that much of the trouble in the territories of the emperor was altogether political. Many of the minor princes supported heretics simply to embarrass the emperor Rudolph, who wasn't popular. But Lawrence's gentle persuasion won over many, so that we were able to establish cloisters in several places and win back many souls to God's truth. Eventually, the emperor sent for him to come to Prague, and I went with him. So you are Friar Lawrence? Yes, sire. I'm sorry not to have known what a distinguished visitor we have in our dominions. My ambassador in Rome only recently spoke of you. I'm sure he flattered me, sire. I make it a point to encourage scholars at my court, Friar Lawrence. I was educated in Spain. <laughs> Most of my subjects, I regret to say, are as stupid as their own horses. I'm told you have gathered materials for a new commentary on the scriptures. I had hoped to begin such a work, yes, sire. Good, good. You can write it here and uh, dedicate it to me. Your Majesty is more than kind, but... But? I was sent here for another purpose, sire. My orders are to preach and to teach. Nonsense. Anyone can do that. Besides, as I tell you, 
These subjects of mine aren't worth your time. Oh, that is not true, Your Majesty. Some of them are confused and misled. I don't care to be contradicted, Friar. Forgive me, sire, but it is true. Your people are asked to fight against the Turks. You've been at war with the Sultan for 20 years. Yet they see that their rulers are more anxious to defeat each other than to defeat the pagans. They know what invasion will mean to them, to their children. And when someone comes to them and urges them to support a heretic prince who promises them protection, it's natural that they should be tempted and fall. I tell you, they are fools, stupid fools. And I don't care for your boldness, Friar. But I do, Brother Rudolph. Matthias! Where did you come from? I didn't send for you. You never do, unless you need me. Well, you need me now. What do you mean? The Sultan is massing an army on the Hungarian border. In case your courtiers neglected to pass along my messages of the past week or so. <laughs> oh, that. Another skirmish. It happens every year. I understand your calmness, brother. Hungary happens to be my share of the kingdom. I don't doubt you could survive its loss. No. My lord Archduke, you wrong your brother. We all know what has happened to our people in the places which the Sultan has conquered. He will conquer more, Friar. If my brother doesn't help me, I need soldiers, arms, supplies. You shall have them, of course, Matthias. You're the general of our armies. You'll have your usual support. That's what I'm afraid of. My usual support is the least you dare give me. Now, this time, you fool, the Sultan is in earnest. He has a hundred thousand men. And I have less than 20,000 to stop him. 100,000? I don't believe it. It's true. A month from the day they attack us, they will be at the gates of Vienna. It's a trick. I know what's in your mind, Matthias. You want me to give you a big army. And you use it to force me off the throne. It's all a plot. You've hired doctors to tell me I'm mad. But you see, I'm not mad enough to believe you. My Lord Archduke. Will you swear to me upon this crucifix that what you say is true? I'd swear by my immortal soul. Your Majesty, in God's name, listen. The lives and souls of your people are in your hands. You know what will happen to your soldiers and your people if the Turks invade us. You must believe your brother. You're very clever, both of you. You must have planned this very carefully. Rudolph, Rudolph, forgive me if I angered you, but for our people's sake. You want a great army, Matthias? Then I give you Friar Lawrence for chaplain. Let him command you a few legions of angels. God forgive you, sire. Let that content you, my clever brother. <laughs> God help us all. It's true. I heard it whispered. Yes, yes, he's mad. Sometimes. That's the trouble. At other times, he's perfectly all right. And now, it's too late. When the Sultan is at the gates of Vienna, Rudolph will be plucked off his throne. God have mercy on him. My problem is how to commit suicide with my miserable little army. And I know that one good victory would be enough. The Sultan would buy peace for 20 years if we could teach him that invasion wouldn't pay. All things are possible to God, my Lord Archduke. Let us go to the army. You? Yes, why not? But I've told you it's certain death, Friar. Nonetheless, the Emperor appointed me chaplain to his armies in the field. I must obey him. Do you know the Turks' way? With any priests they catch, Friar? Yes, I have heard... As you can see, I am somewhat crippled with rheumatism. I fear I'll do you no credit on a horse. But since I am all that your brother chooses to give you, I'm afraid you'll have to put up with me. There was a good soldier lost when you put on the habit, Friar. Come on. At least we'll go to heaven, properly escorted. <laughs> glorious blue and gold summer morning, the Sultan's challenge came to the Archduke, and Matthias defied him. 
As we watched the tall, turbaned warrior cantering back across the plain toward the glittering hosts of the enemy, Lawrence came out of the little tent which he had made into a chapel and where he had prayed since midnight. I helped him into his saddle. His face was white with pain, but he smiled down at me. If the battle goes against us, Friar John, you must escape. There is work to be done still, and you must do it. Let me ride with you, Friar Lawrence. No. You promised, or I would not have let you come. I will keep my promise. Pray, John. Pray every moment. We're in God's hands now. Friar Lawrence, give us your blessing. We are about to die. Pray for me, Friar John. Soldiers, and I dare call you fellow soldiers, for we are all enlisted under one banner, not the banner of the emperor or the archduke, the banner of Christ. We fight together today, I with prayer, you with your swords. Yonder is the enemy. He is powerful. Yet who shall prevail against Christ, who is the Prince of Peace? It is for us to save our people, our church, our faith. Our God is also the God of battles. He will not forsake us. For he reads our hearts and knows that we fight not for power, not for glory, not for conquest. We fight for peace. We fight for truth. We fight for Christ. And God be with us. There is one, Friar. Go back. Mary, Mother, take pity on the dead. All the dead. Go back, I say. I'm about to sound the retire. No. Go forward. Sweep the field, my lord. This is the victory you've wanted for 20 years. May it bring 20 years of peace. Go forward, my lord. You must have angels around you. I obey, soldier of God. Are you feeling better, Lawrence? Well, I think... Oh, I see you have the dispatches from Rome. I ought to have kept them from you until you were stronger, but I hope they'd please you. You were right to let me have them, John. Were they pleasant? Oh, yes, very. You're to go back to Naples, John. Here, you can read the instructions. They speak less than the truth about you, but you like them. And you? I am going to Spain. Spain, of all places. His Majesty, young King Philip, is jealous of Rudolph's great victory over the Sultan. He has refused to join the League against the Turks and the heretics. What a fool. Politicians, even on thrones, have their troubles, John. Nothing seems simple to them. I am learning that it is easier to fight for the right than to plan for it. But you deserve a rest, Lawrence. You need it. I deserve nothing, John. God has given me far more than I could ever deserve. Listen, my friend, you must keep this a secret. Yesterday at Mass, I was privileged to see the Christ child. You saw? At the elevation. He smiled at me and held out his hands to me. It was as if I held him instead of the host. After that, can I refuse to serve him? What couldn't you ask him to cure your crippled legs, Lawrence? You could serve him so much better. Do you think he doesn't know? Yes, of course. What am I saying? His will be done. John, someday perhaps I can have a little cell in the monastery in Caserta and books and only the sound of the chapel bell. I must try to deserve that happiness. Spain, Lawrence scored an incredible success. Young King Philip listened to him with respect and affection. He not only joined the League, but insisted that Lawrence must be his ambassador at the Imperial Court. His Holiness thereupon made Lawrence papal legate as well. And Lawrence returned to Germany. 
There he reconciled the quarrels between Rudolf, Matthias, and their cousin Maximilian of Bavaria. Christendom showed a united front to the Sultan, and there was peace. Then, because of his continuing ill health, he asked to be relieved of his offices, only to find himself elected Vicar General of our Order. Meantime, in the Kingdom of Naples, we were subjects of the King of Spain, though we never saw him. He governed through his viceroy, the Duke of Osona. In 1618, matters had grown so bad that I felt I must do something. I'm grateful for this audience, Your Excellency. Pray be brief, Friar John. I understand from the petition you sent me that you conceive you have some grounds of complaint against my officer in Caserta. It's not just that taxes are so high that our people are suffering, Your Excellency. Many have lost their farms and everything their own, but this, it seems, is not enough. In your name, Your Excellency, poor men whose families are starving are flung into prison and tortured because they cannot pay. Now, I'm sure you don't know about this. That is true, Friar. I pay small attention to such details. But what you say interests me. I must look into it. Thank God. I believe that this fellow at Caserta deserves my attention. Uh, perhaps uh, he ought to be promoted. Promoted? I think so. Evidently, he's a zealous officer who knows how to carry out orders. I am glad to have your... Uh, testimonial, Friar. You cannot mean this, Your Excellency. My dear Friar, naturally you have no idea how difficult it is to govern this country. A sullen, rebellious lot, these peasants of yours. Why, the taxes you complain of scarcely pay the soldiers we need to keep order. I'm delighted to hear that one of my officers knows how to deal with these people. God have mercy on you. That is impertinent, Friar. You may go. And if you have any further complaints... I suggest you uh, keep them to yourself. Your habit will not protect you if you indulge in treason. In my despair, I turned to Lawrence. He was at Verona. I was shocked to see how crippled and old he seemed. But his eyes were as wise and kind as ever. I told him my story. And children are starving, Lawrence. And to feed them, their mothers must beg of the Spanish soldiers. This cannot go on. I know, Osuna. If you know him, would he listen to you? No. He resented me at the Spanish court. He wanted to be ambassador to Germany. Well, then, can you write to King Philip himself? He'd listen to you. I know the court well, John. Such a letter would never reach the king. Then what can we do? Perhaps if I saw Philip myself, he might listen. Philip is in Spain, and you are ill, Lawrence. So I thought. Indeed, I have already asked to be allowed to retire. Well, our Lord knows best. Lawrence, I could never forgive myself if my coming to you caused your death. Is death so terrible, John? Surely to die in God's service is the best we can ask of life. Ah, but I have no intention of dying. If only this body of mine will let me, I must reach the king. I went with him on that dreadful journey. Day after day I saw how his spirit forced his frail body to obey his will. With never a complaint... Never a moment when pain broke through his gentle, smiling courage. I could only pray that such a martyrdom would not be wasted. At last, under the blinding, brutal sun of Spain, we saw the fortress walls of the Escorial outside Madrid. Lawrence, look! God be praised, we're here! God be praised, indeed. We are here, but Philip is not. Not here? The royal standard would be flying from the battlements if he were here. Philip must be on a journey somewhere. Well, you can rest until he returns. A, a few days rest. How many people will die or be driven to despair in a few days? No, we must find the king...
King Philip was in Portugal. We went on, under the pitiless sun, down the rocky Spanish roads to the border. And every step of the way was agony for Lawrence. But he endured. And at last we found the court and asked for an audience. It was granted at once. My old friend, here I beg of you, sit down. Surely you ought not to be traveling. I thank your majesty. Ah. Old bones make poor travelers, I agree. But there was no way of leaving them behind me, unfortunately. <laughs> what brings you here, Father Lawrence? We heard that you were at last going to return to that cell in Caserta you always yearned for. Yes. I dreamed of it for a long time. Your Majesty, I must speak plainly and quickly. You won't like it. Father Lawrence, I was proud to call myself your friend in the old days. You served me well. Often against my will. Ask whatever you like. I grant it beforehand. Then, recall the Duke of Osuna from Naples. Osuna? But why? He's done wonders in Italy. The revenues are excellent and there's hardly any disorder. Has he harmed you, Father Lawrence? No. The harm he does is to you, Your Majesty. He governs in your name and by your authority. The lives he destroys... The souls he ruins to collect those revenues for you. They will cry out against you on the last day. I, I'm astonished. I, I thought Naples was the best governed of all my kingdoms. There is fear there, Your Majesty. Hatred, corruption, death. In your name. Uh, uh, ask Friar John... He knows. He'll tell you. Father Lawrence, is he... Is he dying? I fear so. He lived only to reach you, Your Majesty. Father Lawrence. Listen. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, Your Majesty. Osuna is dismissed. I will send the message this very hour. Friar John will advise me what sort of governor to send in his place. God be with your majesty. Now, Lord, dismiss thy servant. lived on for a few weeks, unconscious most of the time, and Philip sent him home in a royal galleon with the new viceroy, so that he might die in the little monastery cell at Caserta, which he had desired so long. He died there in my arms. He had known the honors of this world and the friendship of princes. He had sacrificed his own will to keep Christendom from civil war and pagan invasion. And in the end, he gave his life to God's helpless poor. In 1881, Pope Leo XIII named him St. Lawrence of Brindisi.